This is the 17th FRQ for IV chemistry. This is an acid base equilibrium type question. If you want to try the problem first, you can find the link to it in the description below. I'm going to go through the solution. So part A asks which acid is the strongest? It gives you four options to choose from. Really simple question. Whatever has the smallest pK would be your strongest acid. In this case, that's methanoic acid. Um, for Ka, the larger Ka is, the stronger your acid will be because you're, you're then shifting more to the right for your equilibrium expression. Um, to find Ka from pK, of course, you would do 10 to the negative pK. And so the smaller this is, the larger this will be because you're looking at a smaller negative exponent. Okay? So in this case, we're looking at somewhere around 10 to the minus 4 as opposed to 10 to the minus 5 or 10 to the minus 10. This will be the weakest acid in the bunch. All right, so then we need to find the Ka of propanoic acid, which is this one here. It's got a K, pK of 4.9. So our Ka is just going to be 10 to the negative 4.9. And then we're going to plug that into our calculator, and that comes out to be 1.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. So there's our Ka, and then it asks, well, what's the Kb for the conjugate base of propanoic acid, which would be propanoate? So for our Kb, we know that that's going to be equal to Kw for water divided by Ka of the acid. So we're going to take 10 to the negative 14. We're going to divide it by this 1.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that comes out to be 7.94 times 10 to the negative 10. That would be our Kb. Okay. So we have that kind of reciprocity here that the, the larger this is, the smaller this is, and the smaller this is, the larger this is. So we have a decently sized Ka here, so we have a pretty small Kb. This would be a really weak base for propanoate. All right, so now we want to do some calculations. We have 50 milliliters, 0.1 molar sodium propanoate. So the sodium propanoate here is, of course, our conjugate base. So we're going to call that A minus. Really, if we wanted to write out the whole thing, propanoate would be CH3, CH2, C double bond O to an O with a minus charge. So this is our propanoate. We're going to call that whole thing A minus. And we want to know our pH of a 50 milliliter solution of 0.1 molar propanoate. So we're going to take our weak base plus water, which is going to turn into our weak acid plus OH minus. Okay, and we're starting with 0.1 molar. So I'm going to get rid of this propanoate here. So 0.1 molar to start for our initial. We can ignore water. We're not starting with either of those, we assume. We're going to drop by x, go up by x, and go up by x. So in equilibrium, we'll have 0.1 x and x. We're going to ignore the minus x here because we have a Kb of 10 to the negative 10. And so our shift to the right is going to be so small that 0.1 minus a really tiny number is still going to be approximately 0.1. So then we can set up in the calculation our Kb. So our Kb is equal to the concentration of this times this divided by A minus at equilibrium. So HA times OH minus over A minus. And at equilibrium, we know that these two are x, so we're going to get our Kb. 7.94 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x squared over 0.1. Now, if you had skipped the ice chart, this is the point where you would point out that you've ignored the minus x. We're going to solve for x. Let's go ahead and set that down over here so we don't run out of room. So our x is just going to be the square root of 0.1 times the kb value. And that comes out to be 8.91 times 10 to the negative 6. Now what X is, is X is my concentration of the so, uh, propanoic acid and the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium. So I can use the hydroxide and I can take the negative log of that X to get my pOH. Now it's not my pH, so negative log of 8.91 times 10 to the minus 6. I 
find that my pOH is 5.05. And so my pH is going to be 14 minus this, which is going to come out to be 8.95. Now, if I had a moderately dilute, moderately concentrated, very weak acid, I have a pH of about 9. That makes complete sense. So therefore, this, this looks good. Okay. Then, in part E, we're going to complicate that a little bit. And now they want to know the pH in a solution after 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid is added. Okay, so now we need to know some information. We need to go back to D, and we need to know, okay, well, 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar. So that is 0 0.05 liters times 0.1 molar. So the number of moles we have here is 0 0.005 moles of this uh, A minus, the propanoid. Right. And then we're adding to that 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. So what's going to happen in that case is that this and the HCl are going to react completely. And we're going to end up with some of this left over and some of this form. We're going to plug those values in. So I'm going to clear the whole board here. So again, we had 0 0.005 moles of A minus. And then we're adding to that 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar, so 0 0.001 moles of H plus. Now that's a neutralization reaction. That's not reacting with water. We're not going to set up a Ka or Kb for this. This is going to go to completion. So we're looking at H plus plus A minus yields HA. So we're going to have 0 .05, 0 0.005 of this to start, none of this, and 0.001. This is going to react completely. So we'll end up with none left. This is going to lose 0.001, so it's going to have 0.004 moles remaining. And this is going to form 0.001. So that's how many moles it will have at the end. All right, and then we're now looking at a case where we have 10 milliliters and 50 milliliters, so we have 60 milliliters total, or 0 0.06 liters. Okay? Excuse me. So now we can do our equilibrium analysis. Now we're going to do the reaction of HA plus water, turning into A minus and H3O plus. So since we have some weak acid and some weak base, we could do this either way, or we could do the base reaction with water. But then we would have to use the Kb and the pOH. It's just easier since we're going for pH to go with this. So 0 0.001 moles, 0 0.06 liters. We're going to divide the two to get the concentration. And our HA starts off at 0 0.0167 molar. Water we ignore. The weak base, on the other hand, is 0 0.004 divided by this. So we end up with 0 0.067. Okay, so bigger, four times as much. And then we're going to assume we start with zero of this. So again, we're going to lose x. We're going to ignore the minus x. And then we're going to add x. We're going to ignore the plus x. And then we're going to add x and end up with x. OK, so the reaction we've written is a weak acid reaction with water. So what we want to do is we want to set our Ka of this propanoic acid, which we which we found earlier was 1.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. We're going to set that equal to our equilibrium amounts. So we're going to say that 1.26 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to 0.067x over 0.0167. So we can solve for x, and we get an x value of 3.15 times 10 to the negative sixth. Now what X is, is it's my concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium. So now, I know my H plus concentration, I can take the negative log of X, and I'll get my pH. And so when I take the negative logarithm of this, it comes out to be 5.50. And if I look back from D, I was originally around a pH of 9, I added strong acid, so my pH should have gone down. I now have a buffer system, but 5.5 makes sense, and it's pretty close to the pKa value, which also makes sense. Because when I have equal amounts of these, I should have a pH equal to the pKa. So I have more base at this point. I'm a little above that value. 
All right, and then in part F on the second page, we have four new acids. We have pKa's for all of them. The pKa's are actually uh, incredibly large. So <laughs> in, a, in a strong sense, uh, pKa of negative seven means you have a very, very strong acid. So of the four acids, which is the strongest? We're again looking for the smallest pK to indicate the largest Ka. So Hi would be the strongest, has the, has the smallest pK or largest Ka value. And then of those four acids, it says identify the feature of that acid that makes it stronger than the other. So in all of these, we're looking at a bonding structure where we have a highly electronegative element bonded directly to hydrogen. So there are kind of some different features. Uh, the two things that you're looking for in a, in a strong acid is you want it to have a very weak bond. In order to get that, you need this bond to be polarized so that the electrons are drawn over here, making the H plus removable. But in this particular case, hydrofluoric acid has the most electronegative element, and that is the weakest of the acids. So there's a second factor at play here, and what that is is that HI has the longest bond of the four, and that's because iodine is just a very large atom. So iodine is the largest atom of these, and so for, therefore for the overlap of the electrons, we're looking in the fifth energy level, and we're very far away from the nucleus. So this bond between these is very long, and what that means is it's the, it's the weakest bonding interaction of them. And so a weaker, weaker interaction of bonding means that it's easier for that H plus to be removed by something else. So it's very easy for this H plus to be donated or taken from a base. So therefore, HI is our strongest, and it's due to that really long bond length. They're all electronegative, and so that's not the key factor in this case. In this case, it's the bond link that causes this to be significantly stronger acid than HF, and then stronger than HCl and HBr.